What's up, my friend? Vince Del Monte and Joseph Rakic here. Bro, thanks for joining me today. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm from New Zealand, so it's quite a distance away from Canada. We've known each other for a long time now through social media, uh, but it's so good to finally catch up in person and smash a workout together. Yeah, so one of my goals for my Living Large book program was to do the final six workouts in phase three with fitness influencers, fitness experts like Joseph. So when I heard he was in town for three weeks, we were sure to make this happen. So we're gonna take you through a back workout today. We shared lots of tips and techniques in this video, guys. Um, so we wanna pay co close attention, um, take all this information, let it soak in, and it'll help you with your training so much more. Four specific exercises, guys, and what we're doing is we're working through the three mechanisms of muscle growth. We start off heavy with some lower rep ranges, then we go through some moderate rep ranges, and then we finish off with some higher rep ranges. A lot of different exercises, ones you may have not have tried before, that are really gonna help stimulate your back and give you that V taper proportion. So if you're struggling, to build your back, this workout's for you. Let's do it. Let's go. Make sure you follow this guy on Snapchat. I'll be the guy holding the camera, getting all the money clips for him, all right? So what we just did there, guys, was three sets of eight. The idea is to go as heavy as possible. These are the heavy work sets to get in the appropriate warm-up sets. We went up in weight, so body weight, 25 pounds, 35 pounds, 45 pounds on the last set. When you've got a spotter, take advantage, especially when he's all the way from New Zealand. You gotta take advantage, you can't just have him standing around, right? So we gotta get those extra reps in today. And having that spotter there is so important and so crucial, because it allows you to push past your point of failure. And when you're putting your muscle on that kind of stress, that's what gets your muscles to grow, um, to grow bigger. Even if it's just a spotter on the last work set, those are, what do you call those? You call them the money reps or what? Yeah, the money reps, the four sets. The money <laughs> reps, the four sets, they're the ones that count. Exactly. So a little tip, think of that handle attached to your elbow. All right. So you're thinking about rowing with your elbow. Think about what your elbow's doing, not what your wrist is doing. So you're just thinking about this elbow coming back, so this humerus is extending backwards and forwards. That's the simple motion you're thinking about. Initiating from your lats, all right? It's easy to start wanting to row from the arm, especially when you can see your arm getting jacked up, but really think about rowing. Feels good. Big thing there, guys, is to keep your core engaged so that your lats are wa working around a fixed object. All right, we don't want a lot of rotation. We want the lat to stretch, and then we work around a fixed trunk. So the shoulders extending, extending, and then shortening. Extending, and then shortening. Keeping this fully engaged so that you can get that maximal contraction on your lats. Think about your lats. Squeeze in first. Looks awesome. There you go. Notice how, notice how he's in control. What's great about this one, guys, is there's constant tension on the muscle. There's tension on the way back and there's tension on the way forward. So your muscle doesn't get a chance to break. Squeeze. We're never swinging the weights, guys. We're always squeezing the muscles. If you want to sculpt your body, you got to think about squeezing, not swinging. This looks great. Good tempo. 
control. Lots of activation. Woo! Good stuff. It's all about putting the muscle on the tension. Time and the tension is so important in training. You want to apply as much stress to the muscle as you can during your working set. Don't let the movement or the momentum take over. Keep that stress applied to the muscle. Joseph, you're a strong guy, thick guy. Have you built your body, would you say, primarily on heavier weights or volume or a bit of both? A bit of both. I always believe in variety. Muscle hypertrophy, the increase in muscle size, is a result from progressive overload. You can apply progressive overload in any way, whether that be weight overload, repetition overload, stress overload, time and detention overload. There's many different um, ways to apply yeah. that overload. So it's always good to mix things up. So yeah. sometimes I go really heavy, get the rep range low. Other times I'll go somewhat light yeah. and focus on overloading the muscle with distress. Yeah. Yeah. Always mix it up, variety is key. So when we're doing the higher reps, guys, the higher reps shouldn't trigger easy, especially when you have a spotter. What you want to think about is if I'm doing a 30 rep set, I want to think about a rep range I could get 15 on my own and then just have him spot me on the last 15, which is going to be really brutal. Your body will be able to do it if your mind is willing. Building muscle is a brain game. Let's do this. We're gonna make this a little extra hard on this guy in this next set here. Uh, what I was trying to do in this last set was the tendencies to bring it onto the biceps. But what we're gonna try and do is keep the weight more out in front of us, underneath the elbow, so the lat actually has to activate more. So we're gonna try and pull down with the elbow more in front of you. So as opposed to pulling back, we're gonna think about pulling down. It's gonna feel different quickly. <laughs> so that's a little tip for you guys. Keep the elbow as far in front as possible so it has to travel through the greatest arc possible, which is more distance, more tension, more activation. You'll see a difference here in just the first few reps. Here we go. Harder. Keep your ass in the seat. Ass in the seat. There it is. See the difference? Ass down. Squeeze hard. Woo! Here we go. There we go. Now we're growing. A few more. Grow time. Let's go. Let's go. Money reps. Here we go. Yeah. Best rep. There we go. The lat. There's so much more pump right now as well. I can just, every single one of those reps, you can just fill it, just fill it with blood. And that's the whole point of training uh, bodybuilding versus weightlifting. Mm -hmm. You're trying to work I like that, the yeah. muscle. Yeah. You're not just trying to lift the weights, you know? To go through the, the movement or the exercise, it doesn't matter. But if yeah. you're trying to work the back, you want to minimize the secondary muscles much, as much as possible. When you go to the gym, are you weightlifting or are you bodybuilding? Let us know in the comment section below. So what happens here, guys, the more you lean forward, the harder it gets. So if you want to lean forward, get your trunk up, you're going to get your delts in a position that are even more short. It's harder to contract them from this angle.
When you get to a point where you can just feel him move you through motionless, the set's done. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Another little tip there, when you're on your own, what I think about doing to keep me locked down is I drive my feet through the fixed object and that locks me in so that, again, it's like your body and cement except for the working muscle. So before you row, drive your feet into the pad. You'll activate more right away. And then for the grip here, some of you guys are wondering, is it this way or this way? Whatever feels better for you, all right? Wherever you feel more gel activation, it's not right or wrong, it's just different. He's all the way in from New Zealand. We just did a podcast together, so make sure you click the link so you can hear his transformation journey and how he's turned his passion for fitness into a full-blown business, helping thousands of people all around the world. I have a quick question for you. Your body's like very proportional. Has it always been like that, or if you have to work on lagging body parts? Yeah, um, I guess over the, the time that I've been training, you're always going to notice like imbalances or unevenness in your own physique. And whenever you do, like myself, you always try and train um, the opposing muscles, you know, make up for what's lacking. So right now, at this point, I think my shoulders are pretty powerful, they're, they're pretty dominant, and it, it somewhat takes over, takes away from my arms. Like I think if I had smaller shoulders, my arms would look bigger. Okay. <laughs> so, I still train my shoulders obviously, I train them every week, but I'm placing more emphasis on my arm training now, to bring my arms up, just so it's in proportion with my shoulders. Mm -hmm. But I guess you're always going to get faced with these, um, certain things that you notice about your own physique. Yep. Other people probably won't notice about, about your physique as much as you do. Mm. Everyone's their own worst critic. Yeah. But all this information that you get back from yourself, it's just adjusting your own training, your own training style to yeah. keep your body proportionate. So at the yeah. end of the day, a proportionate physique is the best physique. Yeah, I fully agree, 100% agree. I'm the same way, I got, I've had to focus on my arms and shoulders the last few years. My chest and back are dominant. Once you identify what needs more attention, you adjust your workout for you, and that's when you get to the perfect physique. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're just finishing off our back workout. We've completed back. Now we're going to do some touch-ups on chest. Um, so what we're doing is just going to be one set only. It's going to be incline uh, barbell press to really work and focus on the upper chest. What we're going to do is we're going to do a drop set. So for those of you that don't know what a drop set is, it's basically a set of 10 on this weight. Then you're going to take a plate off each side. Then you're going to go another set of 10 on the two plates, take another plate off each side, and the last set of 10 is just one plate only. There's going to be 30 reps in total, no rest, and that is the drop set. It's a great way to apply a lot of stress to the chest, which is going to result in great shock to the muscle, which will help you with your muscle growth. The weight may be getting lighter and lighter, although Vince is getting more and more fatigued, so it's becoming harder and harder for him to complete this. Oh man, what was that, like 90 seconds of work? Oh, it's a lot. So the reason we do those is because in this training program, we're doing body part training, but at the end of each body part day, we do some touch up on the opposite body part. So today's back day, as Joseph said, we finish off with a little chest though. Good workout? Good workout. Yeah, man, sick, man. Yeah, bro. Awesome, so there you guys go. That's the back workout with a little chest touch up right out of the Living Large book program. Joseph, thank you so much, man. Where can they come and follow you? I'm all over the internet. <laughs> Instagram, Joseph Rockets. Um, I'm on YouTube as well, just search Joseph Rakic. Snapchat is Joseph underscore Rakic, and my Twitter is om um, Joseph Rakic. Both of us are products of the gym and what the gym has done for us mentally so that we can go out into the world and do what we've wanted to do with our life goals. So we want to give you that book for free. Go to the link in the description box below or 
the link above me here on the screen somewhere and claim your free copy. All you gotta do is pay shipping and it's yours and you guys can get living large. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.